Uh, let's now go back to the Mwando Great House, uh, where in the funeral service of uh, the late Amahahabe Queen Noloiso Sandile uh, is in progress. So we've just seen a short while ago uh, the body uh, leaving the home, the Great Palace, and now is uh, making its way to the burial site. We've, uh, now we see the people or the pallbearers preparing the burial site uh, for, uh, you know, in, in preparation for the Queen's uh, final resting place. Well, she's been accorded an official special funeral category one. Uh, well, she died of COVID-19 related complications at the Cecilia Makiwana Hospital in Umtanzane uh, in East London on Wednesday afternoon. Remember that uh, she took over the reins as uh, the Queen Regent in 2011 uh, following the passing of her husband King Makoba Sandilu. Understand that she's also the sister of uh, the Zulu King Goodwill Zuelitini and during uh, her tenure as a leader of Amakakabe, uh, Queen Noloiso was quite instrumental in community development initiatives and her passing really has been described as a loss not only to the Amakakabe Royal House but to the entire nation as well. And we understand that President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, is expected to deliver the eulogy of the Queen. Earlier on, we spoke to the family representative um, of, of, of the royal family who said that uh, you know uh, she will be commemorated and celebrated posthumously uh, after the COVID lockdown regulations has elapsed. Uh, because of these restrictions, uh, you know, so many things, um, the, the, so many activities have been restricted for instance a body is not supposed to enter the royal family we've seen um, uh, quite a number of uh, well, some customary rituals being performed on the body upon arrival from the mortuary and uh, at the gate of the royal palace so uh, uh, and it was not allowed to get inside the house so, um, and uh, we've seen a cottage just departing the uh, the royal household on to the burial site which uh, is, is still being prepared right now now these are live visuals coming from Mesha in the Eastern Cape province. And uh, we have our reporter now to tell us a bit more and to bring, up, and to bring us up to speed about the funeral proceedings. We have uh, Abongile Yankees uh, on the ground. Abongile, very good morning to you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, welcome. C can you tell us about uh, what's happening right now? Yes, Mpiwe, the Queen has been laid to rest now uh, as you can see in the visuals that they are just disinfecting they are doing they're putting their last pieces together so that she can rest well um it didn't even take uh, barely 20 minutes simply because they said they are pressed for time and they are strongly complying with the lockdown regulations that it should it should be done in a dignified way but they should be always adhere to they should always adhere to the time and um now the 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 people of the mortuary, the members of the mortuary are, are here. Um, it's so emotional, some people, even the family, there were tears here whilst they were throwing in the flowers and throwing in the, uh, they're throwing some things here in her. Uh, but now, there's the, she was born in 1964, which means she died at the age of 56 in Pewa. That's why they are saying she didn't even reach six. That's why the family feels as though um, they are really lost, that they've been robbed of a good life in Pewa. While I was going through a butchery, it states that she even studied here at the University of Forte, and she proves that she was a real academic, and they, they were saying that um, she really wanted people to go and really study. She Sponsored some, she assisted some children who could not even register for their studies at tertiary institutions. And those are the things that we are hearing on the ground. Even the premier Oscar Mabuyane made his way here today. Um, he just also left here, but he, he will be at the program when the once starts. And so from there now, it's going it's back to the. It's back to the great place where a short ceremony will take place and President Cyril Ramaphosa will deliver the eulogy. Simpiwe? Well, Abongile, President Ramaphosa described the late Queen as a bastion of traditional values um, and an inspiring and principal leaders. Other tributes have also described her as an active, uh, what you call uh, ambassador of cultural heritage and a distinguished leader. Uh, we know that she's been quite instrumental in some community development initiatives. Donna, take us through some of these initiatives. Yes, um, there were some 
I did manage to speak off air with some ladies who say that um, they are, they, she was really doing some beadwork. She had some programs of doing beadwork there. In, in uplifting women, is, that's what she stood for. And some of the people, his driver, the person who drove him around, he says he picked him up from nothing now that he, is, he even managed to get him, uh, she even managed to get him a driver's license and became his, her driver. And she shared some really great memories about him. But some things that, uh, that she really contributed to uh, uh, things like um, um, for those who are into farming she, she really uh, pestered government so that they can supply with things like um, all these farming needs in pure. Those are the things that are coming out from the ground here. And some of the things that you, you recall that there's a mobile police station at the Great Place. There was a high number of stock theft there where sheep were being stolen. And um, since that mobile police station, it, they are saying that the crime has really decreased. And um, people there, you recall that. Um, she was also trying to build a clinic, and there is currently a mobile clinic too. She was trying to build a clinic so that she can raise more awareness about the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, but they feel as though they've really been robbed. And some of the things that are done, that there are so for those who want to photocopy their, their CVs that's done at the Great Place through her, through her initiatives. Whilst I was there for the first time on Thursday, there were some people who were queuing even though their morning they said and and they were telling us that no her job was to serve these people and that must that what must be done even though she's no longer here so the person who will be filling her shoes who really has a big role to play and have an impact into society some people yeah we've see we are seeing a poll bearers on the live visuals that you're seeing right now so after this uh, what will be happening The program will start and um, there are quite a number of people who will be speaking there, including the MEC for traditional affairs, the one I just interviewed before we got here. And But even though there are quite a number of people, they are saying by 10 it would have been done. There's no catering. So those are the things that are saying that, that take time. So they're saying, no, by 10 we should be done. And they'll be holding a family meeting to talk about who's likely to succeed her and stuff like that. Having this family with the Premier and, all gov and these government stakeholders who are here. So those are the things that will be happening there in Peru. But it is quite sad. They are saying that they are not even ready for that but they will be you'd recall that a while when the when it was the funeral of the of King Zolonke last year in November, there were even international dignitaries so here they they sent those condolences via virtually and um, via WhatsApp, but they are saying really, they were telling us that they've been receiving a lot of support from international people because they say the, the, the Queen was really someone who really touched a lot of lives here in the Eastern Cape and even uh, abroad she, she really did touch a lot of lives in making a difference in people's lives. All right, Abongile, we'll certainly chat to you a little later.